The teacher of army school Jammu did not report for her duties for many days. When she went back, her commanding officer took her to task that why you did not come all these days. This lady was in tears. She says, sir, I have been detected with blood cancer. So this gentleman says, there is one Sai Baba. If he says your cancer is cancelled, your cancer will be cancelled. So this lady along with her sister reached Puttaparthi only to see a sea of devotees listening to Swami's discourse. Now these two ladies broke into tears. They lost their patience. Swami, we have come here all the way from Chandigarh. We cannot stay anymore. We are going back. They turn away. One Sevadal runs into them and says, Swami has sent Vibhuti for teacher sister and asked me to convey you, your cancer is cancelled. He quickly arranges a glass of water, pours Vibhuti into it and hands over few glasses, uh, packets of Vibhuti to her, makes her drink that Vibhuti and says that please go back. This lady gets herself checked again from the army hospital in Chandigarh. Those doctors who had detected her cancer 15 days back find no cancer. All these stories are taking place with us, happening with us. I am only recounting a few of those divine experiences which all of us have. There were so many sweet things which we experienced with Bhagwan lovingly through his looks, sometimes just caressing, sometimes through hard words, harsh words also. I cannot forget to begin with what happened in Dharamkshetra here in January 1987 when we all came here with Swami for Bhajagavindam drama. Swami had given us some money and one day Swami asked us to go around the city. We all went. We were 50 odd boys. We decided to pool some money and purchase a carpet. Thinking that in the evening Swami will call us to his room and there we will present this carpet to Swami as a token of our gratitude. So in the evening all of us were ready, fully prepared. One Sevadal comes running and he says, Bhagwan has called all of you, please come empty-handed. We were all taken aback. Suddenly the light was gone. That preparation which we were making was gone. And we all went there, climbing those beautiful stairs inside Swami's room. And as we entered and we sat around Swami, Swami says, Aya? Sabhi aya? Khali hat aya? Khali hat aana, jholi bar ke le jana. Those words were enough to take life out of our bodies. Swami was telling us that what He wants to give us. And we were all ashamed also, silent also. But at the same time, we did not want to give up. So one of us picked up the courage as we were sitting around Swami. Said Swami, said yes, tell me. Yes, Swami, we want to give you something. Yes, give me. I am asking. Give me. Said Swami, we want to give you a carpet. Oh, very beautiful. This is the most beautiful gift. Unroll the carpet of your heart. I'll walk on it. Thereafter. <laughs> We had no more courage. And then Swami says, you're all mad fellows. I gave you money as mother that go move around in the city and you think that you can please Swami by this? No. 
you can please swami only through one method through your conduct i cannot be pleased with all these gifts you want to give me a gift i am there standing at the door of your heart knocking at you you are not opening the door open the door of your heart install me there that is the gift i want from each one of you with such profound message swami always wanted to say only one thing that you are all mine but do we consider ourselves as his each one of us has stories so beautiful so enchanting so this is how i thought that some of those stories i'll connect at the lotus feet and recollect and reconnect i remember first day when swami spoke to me when i had joined here in prashanti nilayam was 18 september 1986 so swami was asking a few boys who is amar vivek and then some somebody pointed out to, towards me and i kneeled up swami said what is your name i said swami amar vivek hamara vivek and it was such a loving expression i said yes tum acha hai to hamara vivek tu bura hai to hammer vivek can we ever forget such golden words of swami so we have to be pure to be his this is what he says after all throughout his avatar hood what did he demand from us other than purity i still remember the last day when i passed out of prashanti nilayam university and i was to go back swami said do you know what i want from you i said yes swami when you go out don't bring bad name to swami this is all i want from you such a big responsibility such a big expectation of mother he has trained us he has kept us in his proximity his sanidhya was all that we were seeking and he was giving i still cannot forget those loving moments i still when somebody calls my name i am reminded of that my name is not amar vivek it is hamara vivek so this is how divine plan kept on unfolding in my life chapter by chapter leaf by leaf i still remember when i joined sri satyasai bal vikas in 1977 the first bal vikas guru who was taking my classes told me that we have to do something to be nearer and dear to god so she told me can you stop listening to radio songs i said yes from that day onwards i stopped listening to the songs in 1981 as a sevadal when we were all working in the institute administrative block which was to be inaugurated few days later once i stood and prayed i said swami please call me here i want to be a student at this place over the year few things happened i was working in the satyasai organization in 1984 Punjab was having turbulent times. Operation Blue Star, etc. Our exams got postponed. I applied for law admission. There was only one university left, that is Punjab University, because the admissions were delayed. When the merit list was displayed, my number was shown 51 in waiting list. That evening, I went for bhajan session. 
at the end of session i had an elderly lady and my auntie whom i used to drop back after bhajan as i was about to pick her up on my scooter with one dholak and chimta in my hand she asked me what happened to your admission i said auntie i am 51 in waiting list and in her magnificence in punjabi she tells this swami is going to turn 60 and he does not know how to do the job of their students if he does not do the job of their children who keep on every day playing his bhajans who else job he will do and that admonition directly went to swami it seems next day when i went to department to check my status i came to know that 36 students had dropped and from 51 it had come to 15 and in no soon time i got the admission i was pursuing law without knowing that why why i was pursuing law suddenly an opportunity came in 1986 and i joined satyasai university i still remember it was a very big struggle initial days in prashanti nilayam coming from chandigarh trying to settle down seeing those very very uh, you know unique moments once it so happened that we were all required to serve breakfast and that day there was no water in the hostel so we were supposed to go to a hill top fetch water so we decided that 14 of us we were 28 in the first batch 14 of us we will start serving breakfast and other 14 they would rush to the class because our classes would start at 7:30 in the morning so we quickly organized water breakfast everything in spite of everything we got delayed 14 of us by 15 minutes by the time we entered the classroom at 7:45 our dean came out closed the door on us and asked us that you are late you are not admitted to the classroom so we were all taken aback because we were not expecting such kind of response from the dean by the time uh, the next period came at 9 am we were all served show cause notice that why should you not be marked absent for 7 days so suddenly a lawyer in me you know took birth and that day i decided that i am going back i am not going to study here by evening i had decided to pack my bags in the evening after bhajan one of my classmates came to me looked at my packed bags and he inquired from me are you going back amar i said yes i am not going to study here he said come with me he took me to the top floor of the hostel we used to have a we used to call it d floor open to sky he took me there he asked me why did you come here amar why did you come here did you come here for mba program i said no he said you came here for swami mba is only an excuse a time will come in your lives when you will realize that this swami for whose sake you have come here he creates a very special bond and you have to work out that bond unless you establish that bond with swami your life will be incomplete you are getting an opportunity here create that bond with swami and once you establish this bond with swami this swami is never going to leave you that day was a big turning point in my life of course i stayed back and through my friend swami was guiding me again create that bond we all have to work out that bond i still remember while we were all singing bhajans here once we were in puttaparthi 
singing bhajans. That evening Swami called us and he said, Hey, you are not singing bhajans properly. Then we said, how Swami? He says, what you are doing? Neither you are clapping properly nor you are singing. What you should be doing? That day one bhajan was sung and he asked, see, Rama, Kodanda Rama, what is this? What is the meaning of this bhajan? When a bhajan is sung, always imagine, always imagine in your mind that this Rama, this Krishna, this Sai, he is going to eliminate ego. He is eliminate, going to eliminate all deficiencies in us. He is going to kill that Dhanava in you, which you are carrying day in and day out. And then Swami said, you are all walking dustbins. You carry dustbin in your mind. Don't go and empty it outside. Every day you fill it with all the dirt and don't clean it. So this Rama, this Dhanava, this Rama has to kill that Dhanava in you. So pray that during bhajan time. So he made bhajan so lively for us. Otherwise, we all know that every day we sing bhajans. But we should sing bhajans for a purpose. And the purpose is that we get connected to him, we cleanse ourselves and we install him. So this is how Sai Avatar has been bringing a slow and steady transformation. We all say that Bhagwan has been performing Chamatkar. What is that Chamatkar? Swami always used to say that there are four stages. Chamatkar gives birth to Sanskar. Sanskar leads to Propkar. Propkar gives you Sakshatkar. So unless we have all these four in us, it is no point in having the Sanidhi of Avatar. And Swami says, only mode of devotion I prescribe is transformation. Transform yourself. Be good. Do good. See good. This is the way to God. So many incidents like this happen day in and day out in our lives. I still remember once it so happened in our hostel, Swami was not talking to us. We were all very upset that Bhagwan was not looking at us. Some elderly gentleman, he presented me a book, Sai Sachritra on Shirdi Baba's life and asked me that you read it in seven days and Bhagwan will definitely respond. So I thought, all right, let me read it in seven days. So last day came, probably last day was a Thursday. So on previous day, I finished the entire book leaving on only one chapter to be read on Thursday. So that day in the morning, I thought that I will go to the college, I'll come back and I'll distribute some prasadam. But in hostel it was very difficult to procure prasadam from outside. Then an idea came in my mind that during lunch time, paisam would be served in the hostel canteen. I will quickly enter the hostel canteen get hold of the paisam tub and I'll serve that paisam. So all preparation done in my mind. Lunch time came, I quickly entered the canteen and the teacher in charge was standing there. The moment he saw me entering little early than the uh, lunch time, he asked me, Amar, are you free for some time? I thought that he will give me some work and my mission will fail. So very hesitatingly I said, yes sir, tell me. He said, no, if you are not free, I will give this task to someone else. I said, no sir, I am free, please tell me. He took me inside. He said, Swami has sent some sweets. I wanted some boy to distribute, good that you have come. Please take hold of all these sweets and distribute to all the boys. See, how he responds. Any prayer 
all we need to do is we need to make a prayer to him and he responds because he is telling us only one thing get connected to me remain connected to me and once you remain connected to me then you will see that i will answer all your prayers i remember similarly it was my birthday my parents had come here in prashanti nilayam and in the evening at 5:30 swami grants them interview and tells them that i am going to give a special prize to him in the month of january that was 26 december 1986 we came back after bhajan to the hostel and a boy was standing and he told me that sir warden wants to see you as i approached the warden he hands me over a telegram and he says boy open and read it so i open the telegram and the telegram mentions you have been selected for national award which will be presented by prime minister on 12th of january just one and half hours back swami had told in the interview that in january i will be giving you a special blessing so swami knew everything he created everything and next morning when i went and showed that telegram to swami swami had no excitement he just looked at me gave me a mischievous smile and said if you want to go you go and walked away that evening i told my parents i said i am not going there unless swami tells me i want you to go i am not going and my parents did not realize what was happening and they came back few days went by nothing happened there after 7th january i was sitting in mandir swami came and asked me hey you didn't go i said swami you never said that i should go no no i told you if you want to go you can go i said no swami if you want me to go then i will go okay i want you to go 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 today and he immediately asked one or two boys go and help him pack his bags he must leave today and that night i boarded the train and on ninth morning i reached delhi why am narrating all this only to recollect one thing every word which bhagwan used to say was a veda it had that significance because he was creating everything at the same time telling us believe in me once it so happened that he had taken all of us to a senior devotee's house in coimbatore so as we entered there the leaves had been spread on the floor and good number of pickles some of them very hot had been put on the pick, uh, plates and those uh, leaves and we were all made to sit there now swami had been telling us not to waste food so i used to make it a point not to leave anything in the plate i did not want to take one particular pickle it seemed very hot i wanted the sevadal to take away that but the boy sitting on my next side said no no it will look rude they are serving in their own manner don't uh, touch this pickle just keep it on the left side nothing will happen so i simply had to obey i finished the entire food except that corner on the left side i folded the pickle uh, the leaf suddenly swami came that side sab kuch finish kiya i looked at him i said yes swami he says open the leaf now there were two swamis one inside me and one looking at me and i was telling swami inside me same me from this swami <laughs> and suddenly 
my hand fell on the left side and as i opened the pickle uh, the leaf it got tore from this side and that side was absolutely clean and my hand was on the side where a small corner was left and that was left folded and so i said very good i like it and he walked away <laughs> swami only knows how to save from swami <laughs> and swami only knows how to bring us close to him because he creates these situations only for the purpose that we enjoy his love but he wants us to follow his word to the last had i not followed him what would have happened i would have crossed myself but swami says when you pray to me i respond any prayer to him will not go unanswered i remember not very far in 1997 i was in the court suddenly a phone call came from my wife i picked up the phone and she tells me that my daughter had fallen from the roof i was taken aback i did not know how to respond to her i quickly ran outside looking for my car it was barely 8 minutes from the court to my house as i was frantically looking for the car trying to drive back to the home i was only saying one thing sai raksha sai raksha sai raksha and i did not know anything else as i reached outside my house i saw my wife my mother with my daughter in their lap and they quickly jumped inside the car and i looked at them and said where to go they said okay let's go to the hospital i said sai ram suddenly my daughter opens her eyes and tells us me papa i am fine i have no pain i don't want to go anywhere i thought this was swami responding to me i could not imagine what was happening because he has promised that i am going to take care of you and i will be taking care of all your troubles all you need to do is repose faith in me that instant relief which swami gives and swami alone gives is the proof of the fact that he is taking care of our lives completely and for all times when i had finished my education at putparthi i told swami that swami i want to set up a hospital school and vocational school in a village swami takes my hand in his own hands and tells me that i am going to do for you what you will do for me i look at him and i did not know the answer he says go back set up your legal practice i said no swami i don't want to enter legal profession he said why what is the meaning of llb and that is the time he answers live and love baba if you live on my words you love me if you don't live on my words you may say thousand times baba i love you being in profession follow me i'll take care of you so i came back enrolled myself as a lawyer all of a sudden i got an opportunity for one year course where seven nations representatives were there in the rural development area with bhagwan's grace i was able to draw a project report 
I went to Swami. On the title page, word Jagriti was written. I went and showed it to Swami. Swami took pen from my pocket and wrote, wrote words, Sri Satya Sai Gramin, above that word Jagriti, and said, You have my blessings, I'll take care of you. At the next page, there was an index showing that we require 27 acres land for this project. I told Swami, Swami, we need land. He says, no, no, you don't need land. You need my hand. My hand is always with you. I took Padnamaskar. In the night, I boarded the train to come back to Chandigarh. There were a few gentlemen sitting by my side. They asked me, Sir, today evening, you were in darshans. You were showing some papers to Swami. We were also in the darshan line. We were looking at you. What were those papers? And the discussion started about the rural project. Now, these gentlemen were from Yamunanagar town in Haryana. So, they told me, Sir, you come to Yamunanagar. We will show you a piece of land there. I told them that Yamunanagar is 110 kilometers away from Chandigarh. It will be difficult for me to come and commute. They said, sir, just now you told me Swami's hand is going to take care of everything. Why are you worried? I said, yes, you are right. Next day, I reached Yamunanagar. These gentlemen took me to a village. We went to the Sarpanch, the headman. I told him that, sir, we want to set up a hospital, school, vocational school free of cost here. We need land. So this gentleman tells me that we have 27 acres land. Suddenly the word struck me that in the project report I had written 27 acres and this man is echoing the same figure. I said, sir, we will go to Swami, we'll seek his blessings and come back to you. He said, don't worry, sir. You just sit here. I'll call the meeting of the panchayat we will draw the resolution, we will give you the resolution, you take this resolution and go to Swami. So those people, they got assembled, they drew the resolution, they handed me that paper. It is at that time, I came to know the name of the village was Dadwa. I asked them, Sir, what is the mean, meaning of this word Dadwa? They said, Sir, this Darad in Hindi is snake hole. This was land of snake holes. That is why it was known as Dadwa. And that moment I realized why Swami was already ahead of me. Because we all know word Puttaparthi in Telugu means land of snake holes. I with reverence took that resolution, reached Puttaparthi was sitting in the darshan line, holding that resolution and waiting for Swami to come. As I saw Swami coming towards me, suddenly my monkey man mind tells me, I should have translated this resolution. It was in Hindi. How would I make Swami read it? And Swami reached me, asked me, look at the date. And then my monkey mind tells me another thing, that rest of the resolution is in Hindi, only the figures are, you know, numerical, and Swami must have read those figures. I said, Swami, 17th July. Do you know what was that date? I said, no, Swami. It was Guru Purnima day that year. Do you know the significance of Guru Purnima? I said, no, Swami. On Guru Purnima, I take a vow that so long as the sankalpa of my child is not fulfilled, sun will not set. So I am going to do this. Go. 
work i'll take care of you and in my childish nature i ask him a question swami can we construct a boundary wall around this land and swami laughs at me and tells me no no this project is not going to have any boundaries it will have love and sadhana boundless love go your duty is only to have love and sadhana i will take care of the rest we come back now we were to get the possession of that land from the government we applied to the government of haryana they refused possession they said sir we don't know what is your organization what is your standing what are your credentials we can't give you this land that day i was very very sad i came home i sat in presence of swami i started crying and i slept that night i had bhagwan's dream telling me you go to delhi so next morning i got up i remembered bhagwan's words i picked up my papers boarded a bus to go to delhi as i was about to reach delhi i asked myself in delhi where whom to see i prayed to swami swami where and suddenly i thought okay let me prepare a list of swami's devotees who are in delhi and i'll see one of them so i write the first name so and so mr shankar dayal sharma vice president of india and then i said no 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 second name mr shivraj patil speaker lok sabha these are the people who came to puttaparthi when we were studying there so i said okay this name seems to be fine so i try to locate his address and reach outside the house of mr shivraj patil speaker lok sabha and i tell the guards sir i want to see the speaker they ask me do you have an appointment with him i said no sir this is sorry sir he will not meet people like this you have to have appointment and i remember swami swami please help me i need an appointment and a car crosses me and stops a gentleman gets down and asks me sir where are you from i say swami eh, sir i am an old student of swami and i want to meet the speaker he says sir then why are you waiting outside please come with me inside i am mr shivraj patil's son i'll take you to him and he takes me inside makes me sit in his drawing room and the speaker walks in and he asks me sir what is the issue i said sir this is how i wanted to work for swami's project we wanted land land has come now the haryana government is not giving us the permission he said don't worry he dictates a letter in the name of haryana chief minister that sir this is going to be a very unique project for the state of haryana if swami's institution is set up there please look into the issue and he hands me over that letter with that letter i come back try to meet the chief minister of haryana show him that letter he constitutes a committee of three people who listens to me again they ask me probing questions what are your credentials what are you doing how will you set up this project what is the value of this project you say 50 crores from where this amount will come all those questions and i silently say sai ram sai ram sai ram sai ram so after those gentlemen are finished i say sir i want to ask you something there is a organization which is most powerful it has all the resources it has all the money it has all the planning and that organization is government yet in this village for last 40 years ever since independence no hospital no school has been set up i said sir this organization government needs an extended arm that is an ngo so we are an ngo we are the extended arm 
we will set up that school, hospital, through our own efforts on the land given to us by the government. Please give us a chance. We are the youth who want to work for the voluntary cause. We have our professions. I am a practicing lawyer, but I want to work in the villages. You keep on telling that after passing our, uh, uh, obtaining our degree, we get lost to the world. But I want to work. Give me a chance to work. So those gentlemen say, okay, wait outside. We will take a decision. And then they call me after some time and say, we have decided to give you the permission. Go and work on this land. And they hand me over the order. And that is how the project unfolds. Now, we all decide that, okay, with Bhagwan's permission, we set up a hospital, school, vocational school. We come back to Swami again. And Swami says, money is my responsibility. Morality is yours. This project's evolution is directly proportionate to your own evolution. I want your purity. If you have purity, everything will happen. This is a very, very simple but a profound statement of Swami. He is not interested in institutions. But he wants institutions established by people with purity. Today, I was taken around in this place, this hallowed place of Dharamkshetra, when in 1987, we had gone to the room of Swami. And today, once again, I was taken to the room of Swami. The same vibrations the same level of purity I could see because the people here have kept this place with that sanctity, with that purity, with their devotion and dedication. This is how Swami's institutions are set up. This is how Swami expects us that with unity, purity and dedication we work together. That is the key to success which Swami is teaching us. So many avataric missions have come in past. Sri Satya Sai avatar says, I have given you another aspect of Sri Satya Sai avatar besides darshanam, sparshanam, sambhashanam, I have give you, given you Sangathnam, my organization. Organization having my name in which you are all entitled to work with purity. This is the gift of Sai Avatar to all of us. Through which Swami wants us to attain Him, attain the path of Sai, which leads to Sai. This is the beauty of Sai Avatar. We all know the profound messages contained in Vedas, but in Sai Veda, there is only one message. Service to humanity with humility, with love. If we are able to do this, Swami is going to do the rest. We do not require any proof. We do not require any substantiation because Swami is going to take over our lives once we are sure that we are pure and that is what he is teaching us day in and day out all through so many instances have taken place and I most humbly say that if I am to recount what has happened in last 30 years, probably it will take me 30 years to narrate all this. But we all know that our lives are modeled only by Swami. They are chiseled by Swami. 
in our lives there is only one purpose to walk on the principles given to us by swami if we are able to do this which is our responsibility rest all swami will take care of us i still remember that probably it was 1st january 1999 a cold january morning in chandigarh the gentleman doctor in our hospital he comes to me in chandigarh and tells me that sir people need now vibhuti the patients are coming to the hospital they don't want medicine they want vibhuti so i want 100 packets of vibhuti so i said sir those 200 grams packets i only have one or two with me 100 i do not have but let somebody go to puttaparthi we will get them he said sir i want them today don't become a lawyer in the habit of granting us adjournment we want it today i said we'll pray to swami let's see swami will give us that day i reached the court complex i am about to park my car in the busy parking area but there was a slot available for me as i was reversing the car looking in the back view mirror on the road berm i was seeing those cellophane papers golden papers we all remember vibhuti packet packing so i thought that maybe since morning i am thinking about vibhuti packets i am seeing those papers also as vibhuti packets i lock my car but still i had the thought let me go there and check as i go there i saw vibhuti paper packets spread over one packet was open i tasted it was vibhuti i quickly returned to my car looked for an envelope and with that envelope i returned there and i started putting those packets one by one i was in lawyer uniform vibhuti was all getting spread over my clothes there was a rush of people around me curious to know what this lawyer is picking up from here 99 full packets and one open packet of vibhuti 100 packets i did not go to the court i returned to my house called up this doctor gentleman doctor singhal who was looking after the institution and i told him sir just now an air courier has come we got the vibhuti i gave him the prasadam of course i retained a few packets with me and i narrated this incident to so many of friends of mine one friend of mine called me he said vivek you have that vibhuti with you i am coming to your office tonight please i want that prasadam that night he walks in as he is entering he says note down the address of the courier i said which courier he said the one who delivered vibhuti to you i said what is his name and then he narrates this story to me this gentleman's brother in law was the convener of shimla samiti in himachal pradesh shimla is about 100 kilometers from chandigarh this gentleman was returning from puttaparthi with a carton of vibhuti containing 100 packets for his samiti on 31st night 31st december he boarded the bus from Shim, uh, delhi to reach shimla since it was prasadam he did not keep it down he purchased another ticket and kept it on the chair along his side at 12 in the night this bus reached chandigarh bus station he got down to make a phone call to his wife that i'll be reaching around 4 am please open the door because it's very cold when he came back he found the vibhuti carton missing some thief had flipped it away and he broke into tears that baba your prasadam is gone some thief has taken it away and he might throw it in some dustbin and the prasadam its sanctity will be lost and whole throughout his journey he was crying and crying not realizing that this thief was none other 
<laughs> the same Lord Krishna who wanted this vibhuti to be delivered to his villagers, the patients, and for which he had enacted all that anecdote, anecdote once again as Sai Krishna for all of us. He will fulfill anything for us. He will do anything for us. Because he has given us the assurance and I am going to do everything. I still remember that once we all decided to construct a beautiful state-of-art basketball court for the children because our children were pr very promising in that school. So somebody suggested that, sir, we are receiving money by donations and the devotees contribute and uh, 11 lakh cost is quite exorbitant. Can we have an ordinary basketball court? Then we all prayed, they said, okay, we are praying to Swami, we will have the best. So we started the construction. On a particular day, I receive an email, I am sitting in my office on, with my PC, I receive an email from my secretary telling me, sir, this basketball court is ready. As I open that email, I saw a beautiful basketball court unfolding in front of me. And beneath there is a small note, sir, it has costed 11 lakhs. In my office, there were two gentlemen sitting in front of me. They also see that picture. They say, sir, what is this? I said, sir, there is a rural school in which this basketball court has only been uh, recently been constructed. They said, sir, what is the cost? I said, sir, uh, this has costed us 11 lakhs. They op take out their checkbook, write the name of our school, issue me a check of 11 lakhs. They said, sir, this is our small contribution. <laughs> How did Swami know this? Only the same assurance repeatedly telling us, I am there to take care. You only need to believe in me, believe in my words and I will take over. Simple math message of Swami, yet he has to remind us day in and day out. We forget it. I still remember we all had gone to Kodai Canal with Swami. On the way, we stopped over at a guest house. This guest house must have been informed earlier that attendant that Swami is arriving there. This was in 87 April. As we went there, we found the guest house attendant missing. So Swami was to serve us food that day. So Swami said, okay, don't worry, go behind, you might find some table. And when we went behind the guest house, we found a table, we brought there. Swami started serving us food, we all had food. And then we sat around Swami, listening to him. And after some time, suddenly the watchman appears and he was very apologetic. Swami, I am sorry, I am sorry, I was waiting for you, I forgot about the time. Swami said, don't worry. Then said, Swami, you please come inside. Swami said, now we have already waited here for 40, 50 minutes. Now we will be moving. He said, no, no, Swami, you must come inside. You must put your lotus feet inside. I have prepared. And then Swami went around the guest house, came out, called for brother Radha Krishna, who was driving his car, called for a packet, handed over that packet to this watchman, which we did not realize what it contained. But when the watchman opened that packet, he was in tears. He started crying. And then Swami told us that previous year, in 1986, Swami had gone to the same place and Swami had taken pictures with that watchman's fa family. Some boy must have clicked those pictures. He must have in the due course given those pictures to Swami. Swami retained those pictures for one full year, remembered to carry those pictures with him, waited for that watchman to come, 
full 45 50 minutes even though he was late to give him that joy hand him over those pictures that is perfection of swami in human form that is why he was saying all the time descent of avatar descent of god for ascent of man he is here for us to uplift us to take us to that level with the promise that we will follow his word because he says you are also god you don't know i have come to remind you but we have to believe that in kodai canal once we were all having food with him we of course recited brahmarpanam waited for swami to eat but swami would not start we were all wondering we were waiting praying the swami please have yeah. none of you offered me food today i'm not going to have he said swami we offered he said how did you offer so swami we just now recited brahmarpanam he says that means every tape recorder is saying the same thing then now all tape recorders will be liberated you are all speaking like a tape recorder i don't want this is not bhakti then he says see food is in front of you the minimum that you should do when you're closing your eyes reciting the mantra imagine in your mind that you are feeding me i am feeding you can't you imagine this those delicacies those items of food which are lying in front of you at least make it lively make it real in imagination imagine me let me come to you let me partake that food then i will make this food pure because he does not want us to worship god as picture he wants us to believe that he exists with us all the time he is listening to us all the time otherwise there is no purpose the moment we remember him with the faith that he is listening to us he will respond that is the belief which all of us need to carry with us all the time and then we see bhagwan responding to us i remember a very old incident this incident was told to us by the older devotees pertaining to bombay there was an elderly lady here in 1960s who had been assigned the task of putting a garland on bhagwan's statue every day so this lady was passing through the entire family was passing through a financial crisis but this lady would make sure that she will walk every day from her house put a fresh garland on swami's picture this task she was performing with all faith and belief it so happened that the family of this lady they went to brindavan to have swami's darshans outside brindavan they found a few persons selling bhagwan's small busts and statues she purchased one of those busts it was of brass a thought must have crossed in her mind 
that Swami, if we would be in good times, I would have purchased a gold bust. And she went for the darshans, putting that Swami's brass bust in her hands with the belief that Swami will come and bless her. Swami came, she offered that brass bust to Swami. Swami took it away and walked. She was expecting that Swami will give it back to her. Swami walked a few paces and then turned towards this lady and threw that bust towards her. She kept it with herself, taking it as a blessing of Swami. After her darshans, when she unfolds her palms, she found that bust had turned into gold. That simple prayer crossing in her mind had been answered by the Lord because she stood to her task. She had been assigned the task and that task she carried out. Swami responded to her and fulfilled a very, very simple thought in her mind because he says, I fulfill each one of your wishes if you are doing my work. I know of an incident. There was a teacher of mine in Chandigarh. She had a sister teaching in army school Jammu. This lady teacher in Jammu did not report for her duties for many days. She was absent. And one fine day, when she went back, her commanding officer, one Colonel Bhosle, took her to task that why you did not come here all these days. This lady was in tears. She says, sir, I went to Army Hospital Chandigarh. I got checked up. I have been detected with blood cancer. Now, this was 1970s. So, this gentleman says, Madam, I have heard that in South, in Andhra Pradesh, there is one Sai Baba. You go and see him. If he says your cancer is cancelled, your cancer will be cancelled. So this lady along with her sister, they come all the way, changing several trains during those hot days of May, they reach Puttaparthi only to discover that Swami was not there. He was in Chennai. So these ladies were in much trouble, but a bus driver offered help to them. He said, ma'am, I can drop you tomorrow morning at the place where Swami would be addressing the congregation of the devotees. So they decided to go to Chennai. Next morning, they were dropped in the Chambur area where probably Swami was to deliver his discourse. As these two ladies got down, they saw a row of cars unending. They walked all the way to reach that ground, probably Abbotsbury, I think, only to see a sea of devotees standing in that, uh, sitting in that park, listening to Swami's discourse, and at a distance, an orange dot on the stage was the size of Swami, which they could see. That far, that distant, they looked at Swami, and in the loudspeaker, they could only hear His voice. Now, these two ladies broke into tears, they lost their patience. They kneeled down there, bowed down to Swami, they prayed to Swami. Swami, we have come here all the way from Chandigarh. Here you are delivering discourse on Janma, Karma, but it is our Karma that we have come for your darshans. Whosoever you are, 
we offer our prayers to you we cannot stay any more we are going back they turn away one sevadal keeps running uh, keeps uh, 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 runs into them and says who are chandigarh sisters who are chandigarh sisters so they look at him they say yes sir we are from chandigarh he says sir swami has sent vibhuti for teacher sister and asks me to convey you your cancer is cancelled <laughs> he quickly arranges a glass of water pours vibhuti into it and hands over few glasses uh, packets of vibhuti to her makes her drink that vibhuti and say and says that please go back swami will take care of you both of these ladies were in tears they once again bow down thanking swami as they were turning away this gentleman again comes running hands over few more packets of vibhuti they say please give these packets to shivaji as well and go back now they put all this stuff in their purse thank swami go back this lady gets herself checked again from the army hospital in chandigarh those doctors who had detected her cancer 15 days back find no cancer now this lady with a box of sweets goes back to join her duties and hands over the box to her boss commanding officer colonel bhosle thanking her that sir you guided me to the right place now this colonel bhosle was a non believer he only heard what he narrated to them and he wanted to know everything in details from these ladies so these ladies started giving this lady started giving all the detail to him and then at the end he says madam can i see this vibhuti so she takes out the packet he says ma'am can i take one she says why one you can have as many in fact that man returned back and gave me some more packets of vibhuti for one shivaji whom i don't know he says i am colonel shivaji bhosle <laughs> even his prayers were answered by swami that is the magnificence that is the beauty of this avatar i'm sure we all know all these stories are taking place with us happening with us i am only recounting a few of those divine experiences which all of us have swami's love towards us is ever expanding is ever growing we all need to need to only do one thing have faith in him surrender ourselves at his lotus feet and tell swami that swami we are yours i am sure we will all be near and dear to god if we believe that we are on his path if we follow his word we are his i still remember that when uh, the team of our project members visited puttaparthi in 2010 one elderly lady she tells swami swami i love you swami turns towards her and tells her love my words so we all need to love swami by loving swami's words by following his message i am only standing at this point to tell all of us to remind all of us that this bhagwan has a very very special relationship with us he did not come in our lives in vain he came only with one mission to transform our lives 
to make us sanctified to make us all his we are all his because we know his word we love his word and we follow his word i pray to swami that swami please make us follow your word till our last breath so that we all belong to you we become pure as you want us to see and we all belong to you sai ram